Hi, I've been doing threads as part of another project, a set of different projects for a while, using FreeCAD. Uh, and uh, I've found a couple of different ways to make mistakes. And so this video is uh, a, a video of how to avoid some basic mistakes in, in making threads uh, in FreeCAD. So uh, first of all, uh, when you say FreeCAD, uh, we always have to talk about what version. This is the 0 0.19 pre-release from February 14th. Okay, so we're going to start with an empty file here. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to do all my work, uh, almost all my work in the part design uh, workbench. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a cylinder to uh, hold the thread. So uh, I'm going to do a a sketch in the XY plane here and that sketch is just going to be the outside and inside walls of the cylinder and the outside wall I'm going to set to 20 millimeters and the inside wall I'm going to set to 18 so it's two millimeters thick I am eventually going to print this uh, from the uh, Oops, there, from the um, file here. So, okay, we've got a 20 millimeter cylinder, basically. Okay, now I want to, I just, I like to rename things. So cylinder wall is what that's gonna be, this sketch. And I'm gonna extrude that uh, 25 millimeters to make the cylinder. Okay, we can recenter a little there. <clears throat> okay, so oops. so next I'm going to create the thread profile, the cross section of the thread, and we're going to do that in the X Z plane. Uh, so the side of the cylinder, basically. And what I'm going to do is make a uh, the thread profile that a lot of people make is just an equilateral triangle. And so the, this is uh, vertical, and then we have the two sides, and we're going to make all three of those equal. So it's an equilateral triangle. If I can find it, I've been using FreeCAD uh, 0.18, so 1.9 uh, is a little bit different for me. Okay. So, and then uh, we're going to make that uh, five millimeters tall, that uh, thread profile. Okay, now we can drag it down and place it. So I'm going to put this six millimeters from the bottom there. And this 20 millimeters from the vertical line. And if you have some experience with threads, you're probably noticing the first problem uh, right now, but we'll get to that. <clears throat> so I've completely constrained uh, the sketch of the uh, equilateral triangle. That's the thread profile. The next thing I want to do, and now you can see that profile, and I'm going to rename that to thread profile. And then the next thing I'm going to do is create the helix that's going to be the path for sweeping this, this thread profile along. And that'll, that'll become clear later on here, okay? So uh, first thing I'm gonna do is that's in the part workbench. Uh, so I'm gonna create a primitive. So I want a helix. And I'm going to make the pitch um, four millimeters, just for fun, you know, just for... So the pitch is, uh, what's the distance between the bottom of one thread, one turn of the thread and the bottom of the next turn of the thread? So that's four millimeters. And then the height of the thread, I'm going to say eight. I want to make two turns for now. And then uh, the radius I found does or doesn't matter. So I'm gonna make it 21 millimeters so it's somewhere close to 
that thread profile and it's a right-handed screw it's a right-handed thread so let's create that now you can see that and we can close this so we have this helix now and one of the things we want to do is make the bottom of it line up with the bottom of this uh, thread profile so we can look at so we've selected the helix and the property value here that's it the data tab and we can look at the placement and change the position to six millimeters and now you see that bottom is right at the bottom of, of the uh, triangle oops Okay, now that we have, a, we have the helix, we have the thread profile, so we can naively try to do a sweep, but this isn't going to really work out so well, but let's do it anyway. So we have the thread profile, and we're going to, first of all, go back to the part design workbench, and we're going to make sure that body is the active body. And so now we can do the thread profile and do a sweep here through an object, which is this helix. Now, not the whole helix doesn't light up, but it does select the whole thing. And so that looks okay, except notice how tilted everything is at the end. That's just uh, about uh, an adjustment here. So uh, I need to change that from standard to Frenet. And I looked it up and it's pronounced Frenet because uh, the guy was French uh, who cooked up this math. So now that I've done the Frenet orientation, why the triangles look right. And so I should be able to now say, okay. And we get this thing about, hey, you're referencing something outside the body and we don't want to do that. So we'll cancel both of these things and start over. <clears throat> so what I need to do is have something that's basically this helix but inside this body, part of this body, notice that the helix is a separate body. I've got this body selected and I want to select that helix and I want to say I want a shape binder. Oh, I just clicked the wrong one, right? Yeah. Okay. So the object is the helix that I'm going to create a shape binder to. And so what this does is it's kind of a cross-reference. It lets this body refer to that helix, and changes I make to the helix change in the shape binder as well. So I can hide the helix for now, and you can still see the shape binder thread there. So now that I have that, I can go back and do my sweep again. So, oops. So let's select the thread profile, do the sweep. Select the helix, the shape binder of the helix, which doesn't light up. Okay, it's tilted, so we have to do the Frenet. And there it is. We do okay. And oh, what happened here? Okay, like I said, for those of you who have some experience with threads, you already know what I did wrong. So if we go back, so the problem is that the thread doesn't intersect with the cylinder. So I'm going to get rid of that sweep. I'm going to go back to looking at my thread and my profile. And so uh, if we look at the profile, it's 20 millimeter. It starts at 20 millimeters, and the cylinder is 20 millimeters uh, radius. So that means these two things are coincident. And FreeCAD really doesn't like that sort of thing. It needs to, this, this uh, thread profile needs to overlap with the cylinder a little bit. So we're going to change that from 20 millimeters to 19.25 millimeters. Okay. So that way our thread sort of bites into, it overlaps with the wall of the cylinder. Now we can do our thread again. And again, if you've done threads before, you probably can see another mistake I'm making at this point. 
that I, I'm doing on purpose for now. So we want to take the thread and we want to sweep it through this path, the helix, the shape finder of the helix. And again, we want to make sure that we've got uh, the Frenet set here. Everything looks nice. So let's say OK. And oh, it's wrong again. So here's our second way of doing it wrong. So the first way of doing things wrong was to have the thread not overlap the cylinder. The second way of doing it, you can see here, we have a self in, what's called a self-intersecting uh, feature, uh, a self-intersecting body. And so what's happening is this thread is five millimeters from the bottom to the top. And the pitch, the distance the thread is going to cover in one turn, is only four millimeters. So each turn of the thread overlaps with the previous one, which a freak ad again doesn't like. And a lot of CAD packages, it's poor practice to have those things overlap. So you don't want a, an overlapping, a self-intersecting feature. Okay. So we're going to back up a little more again. I'm going to delete that sweep and we're going to change our thread profile so its height is smaller than the um, pitch remember the pitch is four millimeters so we'll make the height three millimeters so there's plenty of room okay now we can do the sweep again here And I, uh, also, I could have done these things without deleting and recreating the sweep, but it helps just for showing what's going on to uh, show the creation every time. So we're still doing the Frenet, and we're doing the two turns, and we're looking okay again. Hmm. So this ought to work, right? Let's see. Looks good. But is it really? So another thing uh, FreeCAD in particular, this version of FreeCAD doesn't like, is a, a, a thread that crosses the, the seam of the, uh, or that's lined up with the seam of the cylinder. But we don't see anything wrong yet, right? So this is why what I like to do is as the very last step of uh, designing a part, a body, why I like to do a refined shape on it, because that, that tends to um, show problems that even check geometry doesn't find. So we can do part, oh, and it's hiding under a different place now. Refined shape under create a copy. Okay, so watch what happens to the cylinder wall. Ooh. The cylinder has only one side now at the upper part. Everything looks good at the lower part, but the upper part is like missing. What What's wrong here? Well, one of the things that's wrong is this starting at the seam of the uh, cylinder. The freak out doesn't like that. So what we're going to do to take care of that, we're going to rotate the helix and the uh, profile of the thread uh, just a little bit so they're off that seam of the, the uh, cylinder. So the first thing I'm going to do is remember the shape binder uh, over here is a binder to this helix so I can change the helix and the shape binder will reflect those changes. So what I'm going to do is up here at the placement of the helix, so I have the helix selected, Placement of the helix, I'm going to change the angle from 0 to 2 degrees and recalculate. And this move, the other things happen, but we'll take care of that. So you'll notice now it, this doesn't start on a seam. And we need to make a corresponding change to the thread profile. So looking at the thread profile, looking at the attachment, not the placement here the attachment, the upper one. Why? Uh, we're going to change this angle to 2 degrees, but first we have to change the axis it's working on. So it's that way. So the axis it's rotating around is the, 
the, the Z axis of the, the, the whole body. Okay, and we can get rid of this old error about being a outside scope. So now we're going to move the, let's make that thread profile visible so we can see it change. Um, we're going to change its angle to two degrees, like we changed the uh, thread. And so now the thread profile and the, the sweep, the helix we're going to sweep it through are, are start at the same plane. We start at the same spot. So now our thread is, is more correct. But you'll notice we still have this strange highlighting here. Of the whole cylinder doesn't highlight. It stops halfway through and then the other half lights up. So I've found that that suggests that there's something really wrong with the uh, geometry. So again, if we go in the part workbench and do a refine copy under create a copy, refine shape, again, we've got this problem of the cylinder has become one-sided at the top. It's still good at the bottom. So how do we fix that? Well, turns out um, in uh, the tutorial I found, and I'll put a link in the uh, uh, notes here, the tutorial I found about doing threads in FreeCAD talks about um, not doing multiple turns of a thread. Those don't work very well. Let's see what we can get away with here. So change the height to 7.95. Okay. So that's almost two, but not quite two turns. And now you see how the uh, whole cylinder lights up when I cover when I hover over it. That seems to suggest that it's it's working. You know, if I do a uh, a refined shape again here, why let's create a copy refined shape. Oops, gotta select it. There we go. Well, you'll see it still lights up right and it still looks good. So we're good. That's, that's good. Um, back to the original stuff here. Uh, so you'll notice the one difference is that this thread crosses the seam of the cylinder only once. And if we go back to, uh, if we change that helix to be back to an 8 millimeter height, and recalculate why you see we have this problem again. And I've found that just experimentally. It's a it's obviously a bug. Um, uh, that recalculated, okay. Um, it's obviously a bug, but um, this is how to work around it for now, <laughs> or how I've found to work around it. So Let's say we did want three turns of this thread. How do you do that when you can't create a helix with more than uh, just under two turns? Well, uh, one way to do that, uh, one way I've figured out, is to do just one turn of the cylinder, I mean, sorry, one turn of the thread, and then use a linear pattern in the part, work, part workbench, uh, a linear pattern, over here, to duplicate that one turn three times, okay, to make our three turn uh, thread. So I'm going to go back to the helix, and I'm going to say it's a pitch of four millimeters, so I'm going to say four. I want a height of four millimeters. I can recalculate that. And so we get one turn. You can see that here. We get one turn. Now this still isn't going to be right. Um, but let's go through what happens when I do this. So we've got this additive pipe, which is the one turn of the thread. We want to do a linear uh, feature to duplicate that. And I want to select the Z axis. There we go. Okay, now the distance is all wrong. That's okay. We want uh, three turns, so I'm going to calculate it wrong to begin with. We want three turns, so I'm going to say three in here. 
and we want that to be across uh, four times three turns four millimeter pitch times three turns per pitch is 12 millimeters so I'll put that in there and that's gonna be wrong uh, because of the way linear patterns work there it goes okay so now at least we've got a transformation that worked uh, let's get this in scale here oops in scale um, but you'll see that you know things aren't lined up right so actually what we need to do here is three turns minus the one turn that's already there so it's two turns times four millimeters would be two times four is eight millimeters So once it, yeah, it's thinking, once it's finished thinking, you can see we've got three turns here. So I'm going to say, okay, it looks pretty good. Okay. One, two, three. I'm going to say, okay. But notice we've got this strange thing going on again here of the whole cylinder not lighting up. And so I'll bet you if we go to part and refine again, why it's going to, oops, did it again. Um, if we do part, create a copy again, refine shape, why we get absolutely nothing. The linear pattern failed completely. So let's delete that. Go back to our linear pattern here. What do you suppose is wrong? Well, uh, it turns out the problem is, has to do with, again, things that are either right next to each other. So what happened is because this is one turn, it's right next to each other. The, the one turn and the next turn are right next to each other. Or they overlap. That's also a problem. So let's show what happens when we do an overlap. So let's do a height of 4.1 millimeters to uh, let it think there. Notice it's thinking a very long time. And that seemed to work, but again, you can see this splitting of the cylinder. So I'm I'm not going to go to the trouble of, of creating the, the refined part to show that it doesn't work. Um, let's now back up a little bit and go 3.95 millimeters, so just shy of one turn. And recalculate. And it has to think a while. And so now we've got this, you know, we've got these slight gaps in between. I can make those smaller. But you'll notice the whole cylinder lights up. So we're we're in better shape now. And again, I have you know I have to say that all this is kind of working around bugs, so it's kind of quirky. But so now you can see we've got a pretty thin gap between uh, each turn and the next one. So that probably won't present any problems mechanically. Uh, so we can live with that. Uh, and uh, we can show you again. I can show you again if we. In the part workbench here. Ooh, part workbench. Select the object, do a part refine through create a copy refine shape. Why it's looking good. So we found a couple of different ways to make mistakes in 3CAD, FreeCAD and how to get around them, how to work around them. Uh, so the next thing I want to go through is the shape, the profile of the thread. Is a lot of people like equilateral triangles for threads. Personally, I don't know why, um, uh, but that's because I'm not a mechanical engineer. So, um, so one thing to notice if we look at the thread profile here. One thing to notice is the angle here between the vertical and the side here. Uh, if I can get the angle icon, there it is, is 60 degrees because it's an equilateral triangle. Well, the trouble is that might work on a small scale. You know, it's a slide over, it's only a millimeter. You know, I'm sorry, it's only a three, well, less than three millimeter overlap. Um, but if you were trying to do this on a large cylinder with a large thread on it, it could be that your printer couldn't print this overhang uh, because uh, most printers can only do an overhang of about 45 um, degrees. So what I'm going to do 
oops, Ooh, didn't want to do that. Um, what I'm going to do is get rid of the three millimeter constraint here, if it'll let me. Well, <laughs> there it is. I can get it that way. Get rid of that. Get rid of the equilateralness of the triangle. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, constraint five here. I'll get rid of that. So now I can change this angle to be uh, 45 degrees. Oops. To be 45 degrees instead of 60. There. Okay. So now we've got a thread that can print. But another thing I don't like, particularly like, about the uh, triangle as a uh, thread uh, profile is when you 3D print it, it can be kind of sharp, this point. And I don't like sharp points like that anyway. So uh, what I'm going to do is change this to my favorite thread profile, uh, which is uh, a trapezoid. Get that. Okay, where are these two? Oops, one more. One more. Okay, these two lines are uh, vertical, each vertical. Um, and this is going to be a 45 degree angle because I like 45 degree angles because you can print them right side up or upside down. And this one's going to be 45 as well. As soon as FreeCAD is finished thinking. So the reason FreeCAD is taking so long uh, here is um, it's recalculating the whole thread every time I change one constraint in this uh, sketch. So it's a little time consuming. Let me just skip forward and show you the result. So what I'm going to do is change uh, the thickness to 1.25 millimeters. And oh, there, there's the, I see, I didn't see the constraint I put in. So that's one and a quarter millimeters. And I'm going to make this one millimeter. And the reason I like the one and a quarter millimeters is that it uh, allows me to overlap with the cylinder by a quarter millimeter and have a one millimeter thread. Yeah, see, it's giving all these broken face errors here. Um, that's because this somehow got changed to uh, 19.25, so the thread doesn't uh, fit anymore. I don't know how that happened. But okay, now we have our, our new thread profile. And there we have what it looks like. It's, it's nice and smooth. Uh, it's certainly 3D printable. 